deadly kiss by cat. It's tradition, Indra. I don't get why you think it's such a big deal. Tradition? Nally it's drowning people. We've been over this, none of them actually drown, well, most of the time. Indra let out a shocked screech at her friend, as they had their annual argument about a particular tradition that they had different opinions on. At the end of the year, on the stroke of midnight, sirens, such as Nally, would pull someone into the ocean with a kiss, and those without the mental fortuity to protect themselves from a siren's lure, would never return to dry land. For sirens, this was a long-standing and highly celebrated tradition despite how morbid things often ended. For mermaids, like Indra, it was a mass sacrifice of those who lived on land, one in which they were against participating. This year was particular though, for every species, land, and sea. It was the turn of the century, which constituted a unique change to the age-old siren tradition. Indra. Loosen up, the siren grabbed her friend, shaking her hard, and pulling her towards the surface of the water with powerful flicks of her golden tail. Look, it's a special year this time, we aren't just going to grab any old land dweller. Oh no 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 no, what are you doing this time, Indra said exasperated, as the two breached the surface. Nally pushed her long sea green hair out of her face, and scanned the skies before pointing upwards. Do you see? See what the mermaid glanced at the brilliant blue sky above her, dotted with white fluffy clouds throughout. A shadow flashed by one of the clouds, another, and another. Nearly unseen, only a few brown blurs. No Indra gasped, turning to her the siren, just to be met with a feral smile of sharp teeth. Nally let out a series of giggles, bordering on cackling as she swam circles around her mermaid friend. This year, Nally's goal was the hardest of them all, an avian. Avians spent most of their time in the skies, and when they did land, they strayed far from the oceans, after all, their large downy wings made swimming a potentially fatal task. So while drowning one would theoretically be easy. Getting one to even come close to the ocean would prove difficult for even the most alluring siren. This is exactly why Nally was determined to be the first one of the new century to do the impossible, she wanted to prove herself to be the best of the best. Ionia was cautious to say the least, never straying too low, always maintaining the distance between her and the world below. In fact, Ionia had only ever landed once in her life a moment she would never forget. Alone atop the highest mountain in the area, Ionia just sat there for hours, soaking in the world around her in the denser air than what she was used to. For those hours she was happy, until a creature of the night made its move. Ionia didn't know what exactly it was, but it was strong, she knew that much. The creature had her pinned down, and if not for her talents, she would have been as good as gone. She had escaped with her life that day, and swore she learned her lesson. But deep down, she craved that feeling of adrenaline. The near miss, the danger of being in that situation and getting away. So while she wouldn't go out of her way to do so again, she certainly wasn't going to pass up an opportunity that would allow her to play with fate again. So when she heard rumors of an age-old avian tradition involving doing just that, she knew she had to take place. It was simple, really, all she had to do was kiss a mermaid as the stroke of midnight to celebrate the turn of the new year. Avians avoided the sea usually, and not just due to the risk of drowning, no the main concern was the sirens. Sirens had a reputation for luring other creatures toward their deaths especially those who weren't native to the area. It was a game for them, trying to see who could drown the most exotic creature who dare come close to the sea, making avians their prime target. Ionia had to do only three things, fly down to the ocean, find a mermaid and kiss them at the stroke of midnight, and avoid the sirens who would be out for her blood. There was a catch though, mermaids and sirens while very different in behavior, were virtually identical in appearance. 
The only difference was their teeth, with for sirens were much sharper and pointer than their counterparts. Ionia was optimistic despite these circumstances, she just had to check the teeth. She ignored that funny little statement she had heard all those times before, if you are close enough to see the teeth, it's too late. If she could do all of that, and make it out with her life, she would be seen as one who was blessed by the heavens above for many years to come, which oftentimes provided a stroke of supernatural luck and a high reputation. Ionia needed both in her life, so much so that she was desperate enough to take the risk. And whether that would lead her to success, or the deep abyss of the ocean below, only time would tell. When the day finally came, both Ionia and Nally were as prepared as they both could be. Ionia was circling the bay, dipping down every so often, but just out of the reach of the water. Nally was mirroring her movements, just below the waves, waiting for her time to strike. Just waiting, and waiting. Swimming in circles, never once taking her eyes from the skies above her. Come on, just a little lower Nally smiled with her razor-sharp teeth, still biding her time. Although she had been here for hours, she was getting impatient. Surely the Avane wouldn't take too long to reach the surface, right? Any minute now. Oh come on! Just dive down already! Nally shrieked, slapping the water with the powerful flick of her tail. Nally was never a patient siren, always opting to go for the kill as soon as she could. This was a mighty test for her, one in which she had just failed. Ionia may have been foolish, unwise, and irresponsible, but the one thing she wasn't, was dumb. It took her a moment to see properly, but when the moonlight hit just right, and the waves ebbed away, she saw the shadow of the creature just below the water. Matching her movements, waiting their time, just like her. She knew for sure when they splashed the water away from themselves, revealing their long ruffled coral tail. Ionia was looking for a mermaid, and it seems that one was looking for her. Nally recovered from her fit and looked back up into the sky, no longer spotting her prize. No, 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 she surfaced frantically looking around for a glimpse of wings, a feather at least. Nothing. Looking for me? Ionia was perched on a rock jutting out of the sea, just out of reach from the siren. Wings fully displayed out, ready to take flight at a moment's notice. Finally Nally thought, before changing her posture into a more demure act, to not scare the other off. Ooh, a real avian, wow! The siren's eyes went wide, mouth in a no shape, just barely hiding her teeth. She tentatively swam closer, before backing off again. Can can I come closer? I've never seen a Navian this close up before. Ionia, with a similar expression, inched a little closer toward the edge, beckoning the mermaid closer. I've never seen a mermaid this close up before she admitted shyly, wrapping her wings around herself, as if to hide. Nally caught herself before bolting forward, instead slowly swimming up, acting as cautiously as she could. Nally knew how to fake fear caution, and the like. When you see that day-to-day -day right before ripping the life out of someone, you remember exactly what that looked like. She loved that look. Grasping onto the rock, Nally pulled herself up, only a little, to get a better look at her prize. Fluffy brown wings and hair, dark brown skin, retreated talents, around her age, strong. This would be her best catch yet. Ionia took in the mermaid before her, long curly green hair, long coral-colored tail with brilliant ruffles, speckled with gold and white. Her skin was dark, but her lips were a ruby red, and brilliant black eyes completed the look. She looked like the perfect and innocent mermaid. Ionia readied her talents, just in case. So, what are you doing so low? At this time especially, it's really not safe. There are sirens out there you know Nally prompted, biting back a grin, creeping ever closer. Ionia blushed, relaxing her wings back behind her, 
There's this tradition among us sky folk, we uh, well. The mermaid's eyes were so wide, glimmering, and looking straight at her. At the very end of the year, if we can get a kiss from a mermaid we would be blessed from the heavens above, it's a high honor. The avian's wings were puffed up, likely from embarrassment, face growing even redder as Nally licked her lips, only a little. She couldn't help herself. This one looked so naive, not a scar on her, she would be perfect. So, she played along. The mermaid looked flustered or once hearing that, reeking her fingers through a lock in her hair. I've never heard that before. She diverted her eyes away, before looking back once more, flicking her tail out of the water more. Well, if it's alright with you, I wouldn't mind helping you out there the mermaid spoke, moving just a little closer I mean, it's not a big deal for me, and if this is important to you, well, I would just love to participate in a real event tradition. Alright, well, um, we just need to wait until the first light signifying midnight, and then, well. Yeah and Ali giggled, she wouldn't even have to do most of the work here. The two of them looked into the sky, waiting in silence for the first rays of yellow light to come over the horizon. And just when a sliver of color peeked onto the sky, they looked at each other. Nally pulled herself up the rock, and Ionia leaned down. And just as the first light in the sky flared up, they leaned in fully. Water and wings. Talents, and tail. Two pairs of lips. The new year begins.